This video forms part of a larger series of videos which walks you through how to use Zotero to manage your library and your references in Word. Links to the rest of the videos in the series are pasted in the description below. In this video, I'm going to show you what all the symbols in the Zotero interface means, as well as the Word plugin, which we installed in the previous video. So once you've downloaded your Zotero desktop app, this is what your window should basically look like. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you should have a dialog box open here. If you don't, there will be a little circle that you can click on and that will open an additional dialog box. Um, it's useful to have this open because this is where the metadata of your documents will go. And the metadata is basically what Word is going to use to create your references when you insert them. But just to take you through each of the items that we have on the screen. So starting at the top left hand corner here is an option to add collections. Um, collections are really useful for organizing your documents in a later video i show you how to use this collections tool to organize your library next to the collections is an option to add groups um, this is useful if you are co-authoring um, your publications and it's nice if everyone uses um, zotero or the same reference manager or a reference manager at all if at least one person doesn't use a reference manager then you might as well be doing manual referencing there's then an option to add documents to your Zotero library and I'll show you how to add documents in the next video. This little item that looks like a magic wand is also a tool that we can use to add documents. I'll also show you how to use this in the next video. And then there's also an option to add notes, which you can either add as a standalone note or you can add it to one of the documents that you will be uploading to your library. Then there's an option to attach files in the various ways that Zotero allows you to add files. So when you created your um, Zotero account, you might have realized that there's a storage limit. Um, basically, how you choose to add files to your library will have implications for um, whether you reach that storage limit or not. This little paperclip icon basically helps you to attach your, your documents in a particular type of way, although there are many ways to do this within the desktop. You don't necessarily need to use this option. And then there's a search bar. So the search bar basically becomes useful when your Zotero library becomes very large and you want to quickly search for your items. Over here, there's an additional search shortcut menu and you can choose how you want to search using the arrow. Then Zotero basically helps you to find metadata for the documents that you upload. Um, this button over here basically helps you to manage where you want Zotero to look for particular items. And then the very last item here is the sync button. This basically is the button that helps you sync between what you have in the desktop app, which is saved on your computer, and what you will have in your online library where you created your account. Zotero usually syncs automatically, periodically, if you are connected to the internet. In the left hand pane, um, you have a number of items here. So you have your library, basically when you add documents, all your documents will form part of your library. You have an, a folder for your own publication. So if you've written your own publications and you want to make it available to an audience in Zotero, then you add your publications here. Although you need to make sure that you have permission to share your files. Then you also have duplicate items. So basically, if you are adding a document to your library that's already there, then Zotero will create two separate items, which won't be useful. So if you want to merge those items, Zotero will basically make it show up in the duplicate items list if it has enough information to determine that the two items are in fact the same. Those will show up here. Then there's a folder for unfiled items. So these will basically be items that haven't been organized in any specific manner. And in a later video, I'll show you how to organize your files. And then there's the trash bin, which basically 
has documents which you might have deleted from your library you'll also have the option here to restore that document from the trash or alternatively to delete it permanently once you've installed the zotero plugin you should have an additional ribbon in your microsoft word document called zotero if you click on it you'll see a few buttons and this plugin that you installed essentially allows your word document to communicate with the desktop app where you have your references saved we're just going to walk through some of the buttons within this ribbon the first is the add or edit citation um, with this button we'll be able to add citations that have been saved to the zotero desktop app the next one is adding or editing the bibliography once you've added references to your document you'll then be able to generate a bibliography or a reference list based on the references that you've included within the document. The third button here is an add note button. In another video, and you can find the link below, I show you how to add notes and annotations to your documents or your references that you have saved within the Sotero desktop app. This button allows you to add those notes directly from Zotero into your Word document. Then we've got a document preferences button. Basically with this button, you'll be able to, for instance, change the citation styles within your document with the click of a button. This becomes very useful if you're writing journal articles, for instance, and you've used APA for one journal and that journal has rejected your article and you perhaps want to resubmit your article to a journal that now requires a completely different referencing style such as Chicago, then you can make that change using this document preferences button. Then we've got the refresh button. So once we've added references to the Zotero desktop app and we perhaps realize that we have a mistake and we want to change details. So for instance, perhaps we've captured the date within Zotero as 1998 instead of 1997. That means it's going to come out as 1998 in our document when we reference it. But if we want to fix that mistake, we can go back to the desktop app and change the date. And when we click the refresh button, then it will refresh the details within the document where that reference has been used. Then the very last button we have here is unlink citations. All your citations will be special fields within your document. In other words, if a change is made in the Zotero desktop app, that change will then be reflected within the document. Sometimes you just need to click the refresh button. But if you decide to unlink the citation, so you're now telling Word, don't link the citation or this text to what is in the Zotero app anymore, then it means that whatever changes you make in Zotero will no longer be affected within the Word document. And I generally advise people not to do that because then it sort of defeats the purpose of automating the process. But sometimes you may be required to not use automatic fields in your document. Um, some journals require that, or when you're submitting a book chapter, for instance, that's gonna be put together as part of a larger document in that case you can then use this button to unlink all your citations and then it just sort of becomes normal text within the document in the next video i'm going to show you how to add files to your zotero library